Right. Shalom again. So nobody is should feel they've been left hanging amongst us. You know what I'm saying? But we should carry on. And we gotta carry on. We gotta carry our cross as the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior says. Now, where we was where we had left off um in the first part of this on the whole the the real mystery behind this eye, this this eye, right? This particular Illuminati. Some call it the Illuminati eye. And there's a whole bunch of um, vids out there and some books, some studies and research. A lot of them very good in the sense that, um, I mean, effective and, and true is the information that's being put out there. I mentioned the video Truth... Um, uh, what's it called again? The Truth. The, know the Truth. It's called Know the Truth Studios. They put out a video. They put up a video on the YouTubes, and we might make that available for our um, brothers and sisters in society. You know, for education. You know, free. You know, fair use. You know, of that. But we give thanks. We want to give thanks for those behind that particular production that had our uh, prodigy and. Uh, clips of Alex Jones and various other ones um, trying to digest all this information about the so-called New World Order and how they do it and symbolism and what we can do about it. And in many places in the in the series, Prodigy, um, you know, he would basically point to the fact that good, you understand, that which is good, and notice if you have seen part one, you notice that we made that connection between the archaic name of Ethiopia, which is Tobia, because people say that Ethiopia comes from Greek. Well, no, it doesn't. It's the Greeks that heard Tobia, you understand, and Ethiopis, you understand, and basically said Ethiopia, and they gave it a meaning that applied to their experience, because they met people that they felt were of that the sun had burnt their faces, you understand, because they were tanning peoples. You see, the Greeks, they were tanning peoples, and they said that these people have a perfect tan. And that's what's really all behind that um, Ethiopia being a Greek word. Now, in um, another um, lecture, Shior, that we recently did, but it hasn't been um, posted just yet, but hopefully by this time, by the time you see this, it will be posted we touch on this map here. You might recall this map of Africa. We touch on this map of Africa, and um, we say, where's Ethiopia at? We ask the question, where's Ethiopia on this map? And we connect that with some of the prophecies that are being manifested or being revealed in this present time concerning the Middle East, the Arab world, Libya, so forth and so on. That's the reason why this particular symbol, which some of you might view it from your position of viewing it to be the horns, the shriners and the horns symbol right there. And there's a connection between that. We, we use this to show that Libya, based on its position, is the capstone. Is, is the whole capstone in the equation that holds, that arches the two, the two parts. You understand? Now, with that being removed or with their dictator, and, and he was their dictator, many of, of the Pan-Africanists, um, have and still continue to hold um, Gaddafi in some high praise. Well, I guess that's that's their right. However, oh, that's their, they can do that. They can do what they will. But we prefer to make our wills obedient to good influences and to know the truth. You know, but saying so we recognize that individual for what he really was in the equation vis-a-vis -vis our source and our resource based on our source and resource. He may be good for somebody else, but he was no good for Ethiopia, for the King of Kings and his Christ. And his being removed out of the equation is interesting. Now, people say, well, it's this Illuminati. This, 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 this part of the Illuminati is doing it. Now, there's an overhype on what Satan and what his operatives, his men and people, accomplices can do. Because most folks are approaching this from a a a a, a, a non or they are they have and the devil has deceived them so much in counterfeit Christianity that it's hard for them to trust the truth about Christ or the Word of God because they've been so deceived in the name of God and that 
any true son or daughter of Jah must understand that point. This is why resources of prayer are very important for these individuals. Many of them have been so traumatized in their personal experiences with people talking about God or God things and, and with this whole whitewash and, and counterfeit Christianity, so forth and so on, which has left Christ hanging on the cross. In other words, the point of modern Christianity is he's on the cross, he died. You understand? It's, it's very rare that they really focus on the resurrection life and that overcoming life in Christ, but they focus on that, that particular point. So they leave him hanging on the cross. This is one reason why in in Ethiopic, in the Ethiopic church and from the, from the Oriental churches and the true ancient Oriental Christian churches of Africa and Asia, we say Orient, this is what we mean. Um, not the East, the East is further going to Syria, the Seretic and other, so forth and so on. Um, that um, they've left them hanging, but in the Ethiopian church from, from 1600 years and so forth and so on, it's rare that you would have a, a, an image of a cross and have Christ. First of all, the cross is not the cross of the West, which is a sword, a downward pointing sword. You understand? But they would have, they would have a unilateral cross without any image, you understand, of the Savior being crucified on it. But in the Roman European, when you go um, past, across the Mediterranean, you see that within the European and whitewashed Christianity, and especially coming down England and coming out to this new world in this modern time, there's a heavy focus on that death part. On the, they're, they're stuck, actually, on that part and never seem to make it to that real resurrection life. And when they do go past that, it's always very material, and thus this God of the world comes in. You understand? And this becomes really the true God that they worship. You understand? Um, the paper is the wood and the coins is the stones. And so the scripture is scientifically correct, going to the very root of what materials they really are. I didn't say they're worshiping dollars and, 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 and coins and stuff, dollars and cents in that sense, but it said wood and stone. You understand? So it's a different form of wood and stone than the ancients worship, but still in its essence, sci in its scientific root. You see, see, knowledge, biblically speaking, is science, scientia, or, or scientia, you understand, is the Latin. That's where you get the word science from, and that means knowledge. So Christ says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So what we had previously touched on the fact that there are two eyes. You know, people, people have two eyes. Most animals have two eyes. And so this whole thing of one eye, what is this one eye? Like the, it's the so-called one-eye monster. Mm -hmm. No doubt you might have heard of them speaking about the one-eye monster. Now, they haven't found any skulls or whatever so far that I know of with a person who has one eye. Only one eye, like, like, like that it was created that way. So we recognize that this one eye, a being with one eye, is not something that the true God, the good God and Father, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has created. But it's something that has been made. It goes back to what's often said in Christianity, that um, the devil was not made. It was cre he was not created a devil, but he made himself through his disobedience, you know, and through his error, you know, through his arrogance, his covetousness. He made himself a devil. So just the same thing with the one eye, that the one eye is not something that the Almighty has created or can be found in nature, even in all that they have dug up from thousands of years ago. They said, well, they haven't found any creature so far that I know of with one eye. If they have, please show us that or, you know, say, go check this out or that out, and we'll, you know, we'll check it out scientifically to know the truth about it, to know if it's not some, you know, like um, Darwin's theories. You know, they had made up some, some um, missing links, and then it was found to be a big hoax, but yet the whole um, European evolution, physical evolution, he's trying to explain how come he's like that and all the other root race people are the way they are. So somehow he must be a higher evolution. So he was not created that way, but somehow he was made into that way. So we would touch on Egypt, the fact that in Egypt, as we showed from this particular book right here, 
um, Egyptian Yoga by Muata Ashby and edited by his wife Karen Clark Ashby, I believe it is his wife Karen Clark Ashby. It's a very good book and in this book it breaks down more of the science, the real science from a true um, Ethiopian and a black, a black um, people, African people. You see, there's a big difference in in how things are culturally, you understand, assimilated, and how things are looked at. I mean, even look at right now. This is a little besides the point, but it does also connect with the point as well. Look at the fact the the image of woman, for example, the image of woman, how the image of woman. Is, is has gone through different changes where now they're talking about the full figure woman and women should be you know um, proud of the the bodies that God gave them and should seek to be healthy instead of living in a particular image that is projected to them that's like a a, 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 a programming and to get out of that programming they notice that women who are into that image you understand? And, and they lose themselves. They lose their souls. They're ultimately unhappy, so forth and so on. They have a, a lot of different psychological and physical ailments because of that. And that is, at a deeper level, is the byproduct of, of artificial feminism, not natural feminism. There is a natural feminism. And even we as true brothers have to embrace the natural feminism because even our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, it was the first true feminist because he, 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 he lifted up the woman from that curse. Remember, Adam and Eve is symbolical black man and woman and by extension all humanity. That the true image of the male has also been cursed. This is why man is a dog, man is this, man ain't shit, man is uh, so on and so on. As well as the true image of woman have been cursed. Oh, woman ain't no more bitches, so forth and so on. And then we, you see, so all that's a part of an ancient one would say curse, but the curse really we we perpetuated. You understand? We perpetuated in ignorance, and that leads to disobedience, and that leads to all the other hells, ills, and woes that the devil then turns around and makes people believe. Well, why would a god do that? That's why God must be a delusion. But then, when he makes himself or his things God. You understand? They don't say that money is illusion. You never hear them say, they say the almighty dollar and money is like a god. And it is a, it, you know, they, they praise it. They never say that's a delusion, something we made up. But then they would question the true God and Father of our Lord and Savior who created heaven and earth. They, they would question, and that's a reality. And yet they would investigate and say, we're learning things. We didn't know that. We made a mistake, so forth and so on. You, you know, but then the, the system that they made is not a mistake. But humanity, by and by, is coming to a, an increasing awareness of consciousness. But the battle is not over. In fact, in the same vid, it had um, that guy, uh, what's his name, Brzezinski. And he was speaking to some, some, some Illuminati, some, some globalist uh, agents of the Antichrist, agents of Satan, agents of the devil, accomplices of this whole Satanistic plot and conspiracy against God, the Father and His Son and the true black man and the true Christ, and saying that, listen, we've made, we messed up. The media and people are beginning to get more increasingly aware. And in ancient times, he said, it was easier to control a bunch of people than to kill a bunch of people. Like it was control millions of people instead of killing millions of people by symbols and all this use. And they're saying that these symbols that we've been using, people are beginning to understand it, and their consciousness is, is beginning to free up from this artificial, this false world, this, this prison planet, so to speak, that we have created. So it's easier to kill them. They're saying it's easier to kill them. It's easier to kill a million people today than to control a million people. And he repeated that point. You understand? That was the cat go in the Matrix movie. He repeated it. He said, it's easier to kill a million of people than to control it. So that connects with the whole Codex Alimentarius. You understand? The Codex, the writing for ailments. That's the, it's like a book of curses, in a sense. It's a writing for ailments. Aliment, ailment, ailments. Codex ailment. I was thinking, I was hearing people talk about that. Wait, um, from my knowledge of Latin, Alimentarius. Sounds like ailment. Just sounds like ailment. You understand? That's what it is. It's sickness and disease. 
You, you know what the scripture talks about? There are these scrolls and there are these angels that have these different, you know, and different judgments are coming down. And now we see we're coming to that point in time when it's becoming more and more um, um, a fact that they've been poisoning the water, the, ant, the, the, the land, you know, the, the ear, you know, and, and this is where all these sicknesses are coming from. And they're saying this is the first generation. People who are so-called so young people now, this is the first generation where they won't even live as long, and some say even half as long. That's how I first heard it, half as long as their, as their parents. This is the first generation. In fact, you know, in, in getting some of our personal, you know, um, um, health and stuff, our own teeth stuff looked at and everything like that, because very interesting why teeth degenerate the way they do. Is it the food, the fluoride, and the water, so forth and so on? And, and speaking with... Um, um, our doctor on that, our personal physician, he basically says everything. It's really everything. It's a combination. I began to think on that. It's a com So you do a little bit in the food, a little bit in the water, and a little bit in this, a little bit in that, and they stress you out and everything and take away God, a God knowledge, a God mind, the God head, you understand, the God mentality from you. And eventually it's easier and easier for you to break down and for you to succumb either to their machinations, become part of their machine, you understand, um, uh, what it says, uh, it says, Arbeit mach frei, in that sense, become part of their machina or their machinery, or they just kill you off. And this is exactly where we're at right now. But there are other forces and powers that are in the equation, you understand, whether it's the UFOs, you understand, they're not really our foes, they're their foes, you understand, because not to go on a, on an alien trip and let people think that, okay, it's the aliens that are going to do everything. All we have to do is just clap hands. But clapping hands and giving praises is good. And having a true spirituality and a true spiritual connection is good because this is what allows you to have the confidence, you know what I'm saying, in the, the person that the Almighty created and, and who he truly created. You know, saying and not be limited by their programming and their other um, magical and occultic hidden and becoming revealed devices. Mm. Now, the main part of this teaching that we want to focus this on, and we've touched on this in the video presentations, you might recall, where we um, quoted the verse from Zechariah um, 5 and 6, and we'll put this right here, Zechariah, Zechariah. Right, five and six. So let's go to Zechariah five and six. And this is why I keep pointing out that particular video um, or that series of videos. Um, know the truth, studios and other sort of videos like even this expose video because there's a lot of stuff out there, but but some of it is really important and really good and really honest and factual for, from, the, from the point of view of those of us who really go in to fact check it. Like the Bible says, search. It says it's the glory of God to hide a thing, but it's the honor of kings, of sovereign, true sovereigns, to search out a matter, to find the truth for yourself and to have the evidence to prove it. But you must have a, you must have a, 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 a true faith and, 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 and be strong in faith so that you can stand up for it, so you can stand your ground on it, so you won't be hanging, you know what I'm but you'll be carrying that cross and standing in there and overcoming in whatever field or aspect, you know what I'm of your righteous life. But this video also is another video, so we point this out as well. Another video that we would like to point out, though it's not directly, um, directly relevant to this lecture, is the man of the millennium. Let me give you a closer shot of this, the man of the millennium, right? This is a very good video, man of the millennium. It's a video that you could watch. You should, of course, watch, but then you need to sit down and study it, and if you can form a study group, you understand? But the main thing right now is for ones to peer up, and I'm going to touch on that, y'all willing, as well, where Christ sent them out two by twos. It's very important for us, especially as disciples, to peer up. Now, sometimes we might not always find another individual person to peer up with maybe on a continual, consistent basis, and, and that has to be good. Don't stress yourself out about, don't sweat the small stuff, 
those are small things because so is you're not alone. You see, that's the that's that's the secret right fear is that you're not alone. And Christ demonstrates that. So it begins with the word. You see, taking taking on that word and that knowledge, you understand, and then seeing it and, 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 and it being revealed in our experience so we can recognize that it is real. You understand? But then our faith has to also build up to the point that we're not so we're not anxieties, we're not we're not sweating certain things in our soul. We may know this is dangerous times, but there's that trust, that confidence in something that is greater than the false gods and all these idols that people have been programmed and deceived and hoodwinked and bamboozled to trust in. And of all of them, this is probably one of the greatest. Once again, this their, their almighty. You understand? So I'm just saying, the all, oh, that's the almighty dollar. No, that's their almighty dollar. That's not our almighty dollar. You understand? We don't have an almighty dollar. You understand? We have the, the true almighty God. And it's he, through his wisdom, that, that inspires us and reveals these things to all of us. Because a lot of y'all, things are being revealed to you know it. But you have to even begin to take note of that and, and, and value, give a value to those revelations. Some people don't write these things down and don't even share them, partly because they're not confident and they, and they need to grow, or they might have been traumatized by certain situations in their life, and they have something to suppress, and they really need to go to, to Abba in prayer and need to study this word and, you know, need to purify. There's a purification that is so very necessary in coming out of the world and returning into our Father's house. You understand? Our Father's house. You understand? That is in the center of the earth. That's truly the center of all the streets, which is the which is what we call our, our African Zion or Zion on the, on the theological level. First, you must receive it spiritually. You understand? Spiritually. In fact, the outer reality is determined. You know, all the chaos we see in the atmosphere, it, there, there, there's, there's a symbiotic relationship to the chaos that we feel and we experience in our lives as well. Now, the left eye. We say this is the left eye. We said this at the very beginning. This is the left eye right here, right? Um, and on this particular dollar right here, you also see, you understand, once again, you see this left eye. Now, we touch on the fact that this left eye, let's put it right more right here, this left eye, right, this left eye is, is, is the very same left eye, some say the eye of Horus. Now, we just want to demonstrate that there are two eyes, not one eye. Now, Mohammed said something interesting. The prophet uh, Mohammed, according to the Islamic expositors of the Quran, because Mohammed, he was not a writer, you understand? They say he was illiterate, you know? Um, now, how he, he got the revelation, he says it was an angel, it was the angel Gabriel who revealed these things to him. But we also notice that much of the human um, um, transfer of knowledge information came from Ethiopian sources, which is kind of interesting. But the, the issue about Mohammed, we're not getting into Mohammed, but we're touching on what Mohammed is said to have said. And in the Arrivals video, um, was one of the first videos that really pointed to these sayings that we were familiar with even before from our experience, um, even in Islam and in Islamism and studying it and being familiar with it and so forth and so on, that in one of the Hadiths, Muhammad is said to have said that he's going to reveal something that has not been revealed by any of the prophets or any of them before him concerning the Dajjala, you understand, the deceiver, you understand, or the one-eyed, that the deceiver has one eye, you understand, and he's blind in his right eye, and that your God, you understand, um, doesn't have one eye. And this is kind of interesting when we look at this particular, see what happened in Egypt? In Egypt, originally, there were two eyes. Now, many, many would say, oh, all this thing come from Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Egypt was a repository. Egypt was raped. You understand? Know Egypt was raped. The original teachings in Egypt, the you know, original teaching in Egypt were true teachings. But from these true teachings, like right now with what's known about science, it's like how they be talking about how a lot of scientific things um, can be misinterpreted and false narratives can be given, where the evidence said this, but ones were able to manipulate it in a way. This is what's happened with Egypt. 
let's point to this right here again. This is the spread of mythology and philosophy chart right there. You see how originally it comes from Ethiopia, then it goes to Egypt, and then you see this branching off, that branching off right there. Now, when I watched the vid, I was immediately inspired to say, I, I need to do this teaching right here and share this teaching with you, right, about Zechariah 5 and 6. Because we only alluded to it previously. But we want just to put some of the two eyes, the fact that in Egypt they had two eyes, but then how did it come to a particular one eye? I think we was talking about the story of um, Horus or Cherui. Now, Cherui, Horus is a name, but it's a title. It becomes a title in latter times, and even in, in the Afro-Shemitic Ethiopic, it's a title. Cheruye or Cheruyan is the word for chosen or elect. So when we're reading the Bible in Ethiopic, and we read about that Christ is the elect, he is the chosen, right? He's the chosen one. He is the Cheru. He is the Horus. When we read about those who are true in Christ to be, they are the elect, Many are called, few are chosen. That word chosen is Haruyan or Haruyan. The word Haruyan or Haruyan. Haruyan. Now, that's very interesting because as we showed you in the chart, the mythology and philosophy, it comes from Ethiopia. You understand know those headwaters of the Nile come from Tobia. You understand? Know Through Nub or Nubia, where these pyramids or Sudan, where these pyramids are found which have a different angle than the Egyptian pyramids. There's a different angle, and the angle of the one on the back of the dollar is not Egyptian, but it's Nubian, which is a very important point. Or we can say it is, it is, it is lower Ethiopian. It is lower in upper Ethiopia. Upper Ethiopia is the Tob, or the good land, right? Tobia, Tobija, the good job. That's what's the good job, the good I am. That means that's the, that's the good self-awareness. But it means if there's a good self-awareness, there must be, uh, by contrast, vis-a-vis -vis an opposite, or there's a potentiality to an opposite, which would be a bad I am. So you, you hear a lot of these so-called um, um, gurus, philosophical gurus, who are dabbling in the Bible now. They're dabbling in the Bible because they see the strength of God's kingdom coming, coming on. So then before they began to dismiss the Bible, like his Hocus Pocus book, but now they're beginning to say, well, look at Moses talk about the I am that I am, and now you can say I am whatever you imagine yourself to be. No, you've got to watch that right there. Because what it says, their imagination was only evil continually. But why was it so, even in the Tal Babel, why was it so from the heavenly from our extraterrestrial and heavenly and celestial brothers and sisters, right? Why was it so dangerous? You understand? Why was it such a, 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 a in the Tower of Babel that the Almighty looked down upon that and said, whoa, their imagination is continually evil. It wasn't just because they built a tower, but it was because of their thought process that they had tapped into this, this um, universal stream of consciousness where the potentiality, you understand, this is the I teaching, the potentiality was for evil continually. But why was Satan blind in his right eye, but he only could see through his left eye? Because the left eye, virtue vis-a-vis, -vis, is more the material eye, right? The right eye is the spiritual eye. His spiritual eye was Blinded. Now, we touched on the eye teaching of His Majesty before in another, um, in another uh, shiora or lecture. Mm -hmm. But right here, let's, let's do this just to uh, show this again. Simple. This is, a, this is a simple version of the eye teaching of His Majesty. And we're based on the speech, the utterance of the King of Kings, of Moan Besazem, Negeta Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, he said, until the philosophy that whole one race superior another inferior, you know, and until and it was until these untils are fulfilled that the dream of of a world citizenship of lasting of true peace that can be truly sustainable peace will remain a a a a a, a dream. You understand? It'll be like chasing a dream. You understand? Or fantasy. Because there's real work to do. 
and it begins first of all, it's a where are we to look to the answers for, for questions that have never been asked before in the ultimate challenge. First we must turn to the Almighty God. You understand? Who who has who has raised us up and recognized the true nature that He has given to us and go into the depths of our soul. That's all a high level of, even though Matthew's giving just as a speech, as, as, a, as a bit of advice, a word of advice, as you study it theologically and spiritually, it, it is a high metaphysical Kabbalah, not just to be speculated on, but to be operated in. And we're coming to that time when, when we see all of the hopes and aspirations and falseness is crumbling. People are turning to the Bible and would turn to the Bible, and that very same speech he points out the Tower of, of Babel there, like what does it profit a man to sell his, you know, to, you know, to, to, to sell his soul, to, to lose his soul, to gain everything else in the world, because he bowed to Satan's principle, everything else in the world. Now, this is where this I is very important. Now, now the I teaching is this, is that, you see, the I is the darker part, the, 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 the pupil is the black part. Now you have the solera, the white part. You understand that in the center is Africa, is the black people. In the, in the center of the spiritual reality is God and his people, the Beit Israel, who also are black. Until, you see, when, when you cover that up, you understand, when the, if there's a black dot on the white part, the white part, the solera, allows the eye to move and therefore to see different things in the 360 degrees. Right, but if there is if there is a a white part on the black, that's what, what do you have there? You have what do you say a cataract, and it, and it, and then adversely affects one's vision because the light when the light comes in, it gets distorted and broken down in abnormal or not good ways. So see the eye teaching of His Majesty. You understand? That's exactly that speech that Bob Marley, you understand, um, the, until the, philo the war speech of his majesty. And this is one reason why it has such resonance among many different groups who would say um, definitely that they're not Rastafarians or Rastas and do not believe in the divinity of the magic. But that speech there by Bob Marley, they love it a lot, and that's what it's about, and so forth and so on. And some of them don't recognize that's the utterance, the teaching. So when we say the teaching of his majesty, that's just one utterance. That's only one portion of one utterance that has been made in a, in, 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 in a musical way. You understand? And, and it's very powerful. Imagine, not imagine, but just get to know the other aspects of it. That's the true Rastafari foundation. Not just to learn it, but to do it. If we, if we learn it and we're spiritually grounded and we have Christ, because he points out how Christ is so important not to be like a, a rudderless ship, at the mercy of the winds and the wave, and to have a clear conscience. You see, because a lot of us suffer from uh, a guilty conscience about things that maybe we've done or things that have been done to us in this evil world. That's so why we keep emphasizing you must be born again from above. You understand? And there's a hard part of that. Not the hard part. You understand? For some, it might be, but the hard part of it is the part we really have to get to, where we really start to look at ourselves and look at the scriptures as a mirror. You understand? And, and seek Christ and that strength and that authority in and through Christ to overcome these things that is impossible. It's impossible in a human life to overcome years and years of abuse with all the psychological, philosophical, philosophical, worldly techniques. But it's easy, you understand? It's easy in Yeshua HaMoshiach. And this is being demonstrated always. But unfortunately, it's not being carried through in, 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 in worldly Gentile Christianity. They, they only trust God to get more money. You understand? They say, God, pay my house, my mortgage, whatever. And, and God comes through with that. They don't trust God, you understand, for these big issues in the world. Otherwise, they'll be praying on it and they'll be being about it. You understand? And that is fighting the good fight. And this is what those world rulers were afraid of. And this is what they are afraid of. You understand? And this is all part of the scriptures. This is all part of what it said would be in this time. This is what we are testifying before kings and rulers and people. You understand? We, we have the means. The technology exists now. Part of Daniel's word. So that's a brief eye teaching. If there's a black part on the white, the eye still can move around. 
right? And still, and you still can see. But if there's a white part on the black, you understand? If there's a white part on the black, this is where vision. Remember the word vision. So, coming from I in symbolism, this is a verbal. Right here, this is the verbal hieroglyphic, and this now is more the symbolic, right? But this actually means what? This would mean vision, right? This symbolizes vision. You understand? Vision. What, what I find interesting about vision right here, if you look at vision, V-I, Zion, or Zion, V-I, Zion. Remember in the Matrix movie, it says this is the sixth time we've, we've done this, the sixth time kind of interesting because the angels, they are said to have six wings, and some say that the star of David is really the, the, the sign of angels, you understand, or an angelic um, symbolism on that particular level, but V-I, you understand, Roman letter V-I is six, Zion, that's, that's, a, that's a lower secular kind of a level, you understand, don't, don't, don't get stuck on that, but at a higher level, vision, a rai, we hear also that one of the Marley brothers, I think Rohan or Stephen, has done an a album, you understand, know, named Rai, you understand, know, and, and Rai is, is vision. Father, vision, the people what? The people live loosely, or in your Bibles, it will say the people perish. And remember, I say your Bibles or the King James Bible, which basically is, is, is where we got to start. That's why we use the Schofield, because it's the best of them non-denominationally. But now when we get to Zechariah, five and six, because we only had about an hour or so in this particular, in this particular lecture, and whatever is the overflow, we'll have to deal with in another portion, but we're going to try to pack all of this in here as a basic reference. We not, may not be able to go into all the details right now, but it's necessary for one to read, study these things, pray on them, and hopefully it will be revealed to them in due time. Now, the, uh, Zephaniah, Zephaniah 2 and 12, that's another reference, just write that down. That explains the situation of, of modern Ethiopia post-1970, post-1974, our Armageddon. Now, let's, uh, let's be passing over this book right here. It's kind of urgent to get this all out there in one testimony. Um... All right, uh, let's see. So Zephaniah, I mean, sorry, Zechariah, Zechariah, my bad. Now, Zephaniah means the, mean the, the mystery of God. Zakar, Zakar is very interesting. Zakar, here we go right here. Zakar is very interesting because Zakar, right? See, Zachariah, what does the name mean? There's a mystery. There's a whole wealth of information embedded in the names. That's why we say with the, um, the metaphysical Bible dictionary is interesting. Zakar sometimes is spelled as Z-A-K-A-R. In the modern um, Hebrew transliteration, it'll be Z-A-K-A-R, Zakar. Zakar means male. In the very beginning of the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, it means male. Now, this is kind of interesting, but it, 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 it means male, but in the language it refers to remembrance or thinking about, to remember or to think about, like it says, to remember the Sabbath. This is the key right here, to remember. So it's used in the language in Hebrew, in, in biblical Hebrew, everywhere else it's used for, to say, to remember, or the remembrance, the thinking of, the remembrance in that sense. He was of Aya or of God. And it, and it goes a little bit deeper when you get into the metaphysical Bible dictionary. And it gives you some very important apps and applications for those who, who are on the, the active level, who are seeking now, if they're learning it, they're seeking to live this, to manifest this in their head and their heart, even be, and begins with the simple things that he says to our soul individually. So it's not so much showing something to somebody else, but it's seeing this manifest on your own feelings and thoughts and attitudes. You know what I'm saying? You start to look at your speech, how, how you speak. So then you'll say things and say, I'm just saying because I've heard this a lot, but when I think about it, it's nonsense. So you, might, you still may make mistake and almost speak that way, but you start to catch your speech. 
You start to think how you how how you thinking. You know and this is how you begin to overcome this embedded programming that a part of it is also genetic. So this is how, in a sense, we save our ancestors too on, on a certain level. You know and not them directly, but we we purify this out of even our genome on that sort of level. See, Babylon knows this. They know that genes and DNA um, is rewritable. You know what I'm saying? And it's healable. We have these healing powers already in us, but they, they say something prevents us from tapping into it. And a lot of that is the misprogramming. And it's not just this civilization, but this civilization is now the head of it. This is why these symbols they keep using are recycled, because this is all part of, 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 of a... Um, of an of a age, this particular age, which covers thousands of years. But here in Zechariah chapter 5, this is the ten visions. And now it speaks of an apha. Oh, that's what, that's what I wanted to share with you. This is why I thought this was so very interesting. It's another, it's another um, what you call it, another Tomorrow's World magazine. I just caught a glimpse of it. And this is what brought me back on this on this point about um, their resemblance. Their resemblance. Hold on for one moment. All right. So here we go. Here we go right here. All right. Here we go right here. Now, which one was it? Which one was it? It was talking about something about money. Um and hard times, and they were talking about an effa, an effa, the word effa, E-P-H-A-H, -H, an effa. And an effa is a, is a particular measurement, if I recall, it's a particular measurement, it's a measurement of dry goods, it's a dry goods measurement, right, it's a dry goods measurement, right, um, Look, this is so interesting. Just this page right here for a quick moment. It says, it says the criminalization of Christianity, right? And notice how they have the dollar right there and the part where it says, in God we trust. You know, just that connection there just reinforces what we've been saying. Wasn't that magazine? Let's see if we can get this here. And it was speaking about Revelation. Okay, here, this is the article right here. And speak, okay, here was it, greed. It's talking about greed. Right? They're talking about greed. The guy kissing the money. The guy loving the money. Greed. Right? You see that right there? There he goes. Right? Kissing the money. So you see that enough, and you start to kiss the money, and you feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. So now, it was talking about an honest effort. It was this section right here, an honest effort. Now, let me first of all read this verse right here that we have before us, which is Zechariah 5 and 6. And just point out why we're making this connection with what's on the, the eye, on the pyramid, the illuminated eye, and so forth and so on. Let, let's make that connection first, and, and then we'll explain what an effort is. And hopefully, um, checking the time, we'll have some time to get into it, at least on a basic level. So it says right here, we'll read from verse 5. It says, Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said to me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. He says, so the angel that spoke to um, Zechariah, Zacharias, who spoke to Zacharias, said, uh, lift up your eyes and see what it is that's going forth. Something is going forth, right, in this kind of uh, dream or vision, this vision state. And, now this is verse 6, and I said, what is it? And he, speaking of the Melaak, the angel said, this is an effort. This is an effort that goeth forth. He said, moreover, and, and he continued to speak. He also said, This is their, this is their resemblance through all the earth. This is their resemblance through all the earth. Now, that word resemblance, and you won't be able to get it just looking at King James Bible, unfortunately. Even here in the Schofield, they probably either didn't get it. And, and didn't put a reference. They did it with other things that are not so uh, obvious to really see, right? But they didn't do it right here for whatever reason. Um, but when you go to the Hebrew, 
You have to go to the Hebrew. Therefore, use these word programs or the scope, the what's that called, the Blue Letter Bible. If you have online access, go to the Blue Letter Bible. Get this verse, Zechariah 5 and 6. Go to the verse, and then you can click on the words. If um, You might have to figure out how it works. Hopefully, you got it, and it's not too difficult. I think it's a T or the C or one of them that gives you the Hebrew. And when you get into what, what is the Hebrew word behind resemblance, in fact, I wanted to have the minor prophets out. I had the minor prophets out before. It's probably in the study because um, they have the individual Hebrew books and, and go to the footnote and see what the footnote is. I didn't know what the footnote says. Well, that's in the minor prophets, is it? I think they put them in with the minor prophets. Um, anyway, the word resemblance, the word resemblance there is really I, or in the Hebrew is oin. It's oin. So let's reread this verse the way a bar mitzvah, one who's a post bar mitzvah, Jew would be able to read this verse, right? When we read this verse, it says, And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their eye, this is their oin, this is their eye, this is their ea oin, through all the earth. This is their eye through all the earth. This is a, a major, a major verse. You understand? And a lot of the folks out there that's putting out videos to try to waken the people and, and minister to them the truth are doing a good job from what, from what I and I can say in Christ. However, they need to get up on this verse right here, and they need to see the full significance of Zechariah 5 and 6 in this eye and what's going on in the seclorum presently. It's a major overstanding, especially for those who have faith and those, the people of true faith. Now, this article here, it speaks on the honest effort, just to get, let you see the evidence for yourself. It says an honest effort right here, right? An honest effort, right? And the particular article is on greed, right? It's on greed. So let's read a little bit of what it says. It says, the seventh commandment states, you shall not steal, Exodus 20 and 15. In addition to forbidding theft, this commandment, Really, it, it, it should say this, this word. This is part of w one of the words of the Al-Kidan, the Bandai Barit. But as it says, this commandment or word acknowledges that people may own private property. You know, this word says that you have a right, a divine, a natural, and an alienable right to own private property. I mean, every human being on the face of the earth, but in particular is speaking of Beta Israel. It's speaking of I and I, the once lost but now found Beta Israel in particular now. So make sure you understand that all Beta Israel, all Ethiopian Hebrews, right? This, this is, that, that is the specific application. But in Christ, for all true Christians, it extends to all true Christians regardless of their race, ethnicity, so forth and so on. Right? But it says, yet scripture, the Metzhaf, also counsels respect for others' property. In other words, it also counsels us to have respect. Like if I have my own thing, I should have respect for the guy. He has his own thing over there, right? Or, 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 or he has something that is his and not to covet. And it points out the wrong motives that can produce theft. So it gives us a psychological. Um, um, exegesis in the Bible on what are the motives. So when we read that, we have to meditate and look at ourselves and say, wow, am I motivated like that? And then when we recognize, when we recognize these things, we have to give them up to Christ. We have to, we have to forbid them, deny them, and recognize how wrong these were. And even in, in many cases, if we can, make amends. That means apologize to the person that we have wronged. Now, they might not accept it. They might accept it. But we have to do those acts. If we can't speak to them in prayer, we have to ask Abba in the name of Yeshua to forgive us for that when we really recognize how wrong it was. And, and it's the word now that illuminates us. And this is where we get to the higher network, the spiritual network. And for those who are on the melanin tip, this is when our melanin, really become spiritually active, begins to become more spiritually active. And this is why, this is what proves that it was a particular race, race that he chose, a particular zar or seed. 
So it points out the wrong motives that can produce theft, covetousness, and greed. The Apostle James Hawadia Ya'ikob, he wrote, quote, Where do wars and fighting come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. That's interesting. You would think that ones would lust and get it, but they lust and they don't have. Because once you get caught up on that, there's, there's no end. It's like falling, like in a dream when you're falling. So it's like a continual stumbling in that sense. That's why it says you lust. You know what I'm saying? You lust and do not have. James chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, the epistle of, of James in the New Testament. Or Yaakob, Jacob, which is the Hebrew of the English James. To combat the wrong impulses of human nature, you know, saying of few, really the wrong impulses of a, a a virus infected human nature. See, that's what has happened. Now, human nature originally was created good. Oh, Ethiopia, get the connection in the Bible. But then it 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 it, it, it through Adam and that symbolism, it accepted the seed of Satan, the word of Satan, and poured water on and germinated it and, 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 and gave it life, and now the fruits is what is in um, the distorted, you understand, human nature, or abnormal human nature, artificial really, artificial will be the best word, artificial human nature. God built honesty and integrity into his statutes. Here is a good example. Quote, you shall do no injustice in judgment, in measurement of length, weight, or volume. You shall have honest scales, get that, honest scales, honest weights, and honest effa, and honest effa, and an honest hin, H-I-N. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, of Gibbet, of Leviticus chapter 19, verses 35 to 36. Now, out of Egypt. You understand? But out of the lower Egypt, the Duat or the Amenta, and for us in this present time, this West is the spiritual Egypt. Now, in ancient Israel, an Ephah, now here we explain now what an Ephah is so you can understand that particular verse, Zechariah 5 and 6. An Ephah was a dry measure of about a bushel, often used to measure grains. A hen was a liquid measure of about two gallons. Applying the principle today would go beyond simply measuring out quantities of groceries or gasoline. Our modern application of the just or unjust effort can involve how we measure out our labor, how we measure our labor. If we on the job, if we are on the job for eight hours, now get this, if we're on the job for eight hours, do we give our employers the eight hours of work they are paying for, not six hours work. Now, this one thing they did, that's a, that's a good point for the employees. They came from the employee perspective. What about if they work for eight hours, are they getting paid their eight hours worth of wages or taxes coming out that they never see because they go off to fight wars and, you know, um, they go off to use it for wars and other kind of covert or so-called black, they slander God, they call it black operations. You know what I mean? God's way teaches us to give people the full value we have promised them. So that's both for the worker, the employee, and the employer, and vice versa. But some Christians will point it one way or another, which is their political views, um, um, fornicating or adulterating their so-called so proclaimed spiritual um, value, you know, I'm a Christian, but then they, they politically, they're like this, you know what I mean? So that their, their, their faith is, is like, they fornicated in a sense, spiritually speaking, they fornicated or adulterated, perhaps. Now, um, but, but so John is teaching us that we have to give people the full value we have promised them, or we have agreed upon within contract, and that is the employer as well as the employee. This is godly and good business. It goes on to say that job plainly forbids the personal corruption that greed will foster. He did this because greed is alien. Greed is alien, and not in a good way, a fringe way, 
to his character, is alien to his character. However, he does not forbid his people from bargaining for a fair price or making a profit. There's nothing wrong with bargaining, you understand, negotiating, or even making a profit. There is no biblical admonition against working for gain or engaging in productive enterprise to create wealth. And this is something that we, as the once lost but now found, Ethiopian Hebrews have to recognize in our Ethiopian Hebrew commonwealth as we go about to build it and to, and to manifest it in the world, creating our own world order in God and his Christ. In fact, there are dozens of biblical admonitions in both the Old Testament and the New about how to gain wealth and to conduct commercial relationships in ways that help people become better employees and businessmen. Remember, having God's blessing is crucial to any enterprise. Having God's blessing. Quote, and you shall remember the Lord your God, Yahweh, Eloheka, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 18. Many people mistakenly think that the Bible calls money the root of all evil. That's a good point. But this is not scripture. It's not the metzhaf. Rather, it is the love of money that is the chigar. That is the chigar. That's the problem, right? That leads to the um, mekara, right? Um, it says, consider the actual scripture that the Apostle Paul wrote to the evangel evangelist, Wengeloita Timotewos, to Timothy. Quote, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now, really... It is really the root, but some say a root. Anyway, 1 Timothy 6 and 10, read it and meditate on it for yourself. John wants us to prosper and to enjoy life in the right or in the righteous way. The apostle Johannes or John wished good things for his congregations, for, for his brothers and sisters in their groups. Quote, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, and be in health. This is where all this is leading, health. Taina, 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 yisterling. This is where it's all leading to, taina. In health, just as your soul prospers. So he says, as we prosper in our soul, may we also prosper in our health and in, in any worldly or material, organic activity that we are in righteously. And there's nothing wrong with that. See, some folks don't recognize that this is part of our inheritance. And it's very important for each of us, from the youngest to the oldest of us, as true Rastafari, as Ethiopian Hebrews, to recognize this. But sadly, for many, the pursuit of wealth brings evil, kufu and kufunya, and negaroch, rather than good, rather than the melkam or the tol. And stress, it brings stress and anxiety rather than enjoyment. Rather than true enjoyment, greed is insatiable. It's like a bottomless pit, yo. There is always a hunger for more. There's always more fall.